All right, 10.6 here. Uh, I've renamed it Binomial Experiments. Uh, the book calls it something else, but this is what it boils down to. This is what we want to talk about and be fluent in is binomial experiments. What's the probability that such and such will happen in a binomial experiment? Uh, so first we'll talk about random variables, what they are and how we use them. We'll then talk about probability distributions. Um, that has to do with random variables and the, the probability that a certain random variable will uh, come up. Binomial probability would be a certain kind of probability and this by, this prefix by should tell you it has something to do with the number two. Then we'll talk about a binomial experiment, which is an experiment with binomial probability in it. Uh, and a binomial distribution uh, would be a probability distribution of a binomial experiment. So. Uh, what the heck does all that mean? Let's start by talking about random variables. All right. So a random variable. A random variable is a number, always a number. So when we conduct an experiment, the result is going to have to somehow be a number, um, even when the result isn't a number. So I'll show you what I mean. But it's a number that we assign, or we give, or we associate with uh, a, an outcome. So let's start with an example where this is really straightforward. If we roll a die, so here's an experiment. Rolling a die is an experiment. And what are the possible outcomes of this experiment? We can get a 1, or a 2, or a 3, a 4, 5, or 6. So if my random variable is, say, x, a capital letter x, there are capital letters here. Well, in this case, the random variable x is equal to 1. In this case, the random variable x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3, random variable is equal to 4, 5, or 6. So that may not help clear much up because it's such a, a straightforward example. You say, well, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Uh, I get that, but let's say we flip a coin. So here's another experiment, flipping a coin. What can you get if you flip a coin? Well, we think heads or tails, but these aren't numbers. For random variables, we have to assign numbers to these outcomes. So how can we do that? Let's say that we let our random variable be F, okay, for flip. It doesn't really matter if it's a capital letter F. And here we'll say that F is equal to 1 if we get heads. And F will be equal to 2 if we get tails. So like if we were to write down the results of um, this experiment just all in a row, we flip a coin and we get a heads, we would put a 1. And then next if we got a heads, we put a 1. We got a heads again, we put a 1. Now we got tails, we'll put 2. We got a heads again, then we got tails, and we got another tails, and we got a heads. So this is how we would write down the, the results rather than heads, heads, you know, H, 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 T, H, T, T, H. We would write down these numbers. Okay, so that's how a random variable works. And, uh, and the reason is, um, or at least one reason that I can think of is uh, for something called expected value. Kind of like on average, we want to know um, what number can we expect to get. Um, and for these ones where everything is equally likely, obviously, like your average number that you would get would be like three and a half. And the average number you would get here is 0. 0.5. And um, so it's, it's to numberize these experiments. Um, so let's think of a, a third one. Let's say that we, uh, we pick a marble. And we'll pick a marble out of this urn. I like urn because it's a funny word, and it's a funny context for the word urn. Um, but in probability, a lot of times, I, I think it's just left over from pretty old, the olden days of math, uh, when we put marbles in urns instead of people's ashes. So I don't, I don't know why we say urn, but it's fun to say. Uh, so we're going to pick marbles out of this urn. Um, and so different things can happen. We can get a red. Okay, so let's talk about getting a red. And we'll just put R, okay? Um, and so the result would be the color of a marble, so maybe our random variable will be C. And, uh, and so if we get a red, let's just call C equal to 1. Uh, 
and if we get um, green, then the color of the marble is green, and we'll just say that C, the random variable, is 2. Um, and if we get a blue, we'll just say that C is equal to 3, and if we get an orange, then um, uh, we'll call that C is equal to 4. Okay. So there you go. There, there's several examples of, uh, of random variables. Okay. Um, so now let's quickly go through these and, and uh, assign probability distributions to them. So here we go. Um, I've kind of not left myself a lot of room here. But uh, let's see. Let me, let me grab a color, color code this. Uh, so the red parts will be not probability. 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 Distribution. So the probability that the random variable x will be equal to 1, well, that 1 means that you've gotten a 1 on a die. The probability that x will be 1 is 1 sixth, 1 out of 6. The probability that x will be equal to 2 is 1 out of 6. The probability that x will be equal to 3 is 1 out of 6, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, so we have taken every random variable and said, what's the probability of that random variable happening? Uh, and here is, uh, it's pretty straightforward. The probability that the random variable f will be equal to 1 is 0.5. Or so, yeah, so the probability is 0.5, and the probability is of, of f being 2, which means that we got a tails, is 0.5. Right. For this probability distribution, it won't be like uniform across the board. We'll have different probabilities. The probability that the color will be red, which means c is equal to 1, uh, the probability that that happens is, well, there's 1, 2, 3 reds out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 total marbles, so the probability is 3 out of 10 that c will be equal to 1. The probability that c is equal to 2, uh, so 2 means green, green is, uh, there's 2 of them, so 2 out of 10, or 1 out of 5, that's the probability of that happening. And the probability of c being equal to 3, uh, well, 3 means that you got a blue. There's one blue out of 10, so 1 out of 10 is the probability. And the probability of C being equal to 4, uh, which means you get an orange. There's four oranges out of 10, so 2 out of 5. Okay, so we have taken these random variables and assigned probabilities to them. And the way this should work out is if you add up all these probabilities of this distribution, it should add up to 1. It should add up to the whole shebang, 100%. Okay, so that's a, a probability distribution. Before we move on to um, a binomial uh, probability, let's just look at a, another probability distribution. Um, just It's in a different form. Okay, so we'll, we'll use a, another experiment so we get uh, more examples. So let's talk about uh, rolling two dice and adding them. Uh, so if we take two dice and we add them together, let's think about all the results that we could get. What, what values could our random variable have? So let's just call it x. Uh, uh, we'll put it over here. X could be equal to uh, 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2. Couldn't be 1, because you can't get two dice, add them together, and get 1. Um, but X could be 3, 4, and all the way up to 12. If we add these two dice together, we could get a number as big as 12. Um, and so a probability distribution would say, what's the probability of each of these random variables happening? So one way to represent it would be to just so like we did, probability of this equals that. Or we could make a 
a little graph of the whole thing. So this would be your random variable. Your random variable x. And this guy right here uh, could be, let see if I can turn this thing sideways. Um, oh, this is going to be tricky. Um, so this would be your probability. That looks not so good, but you get it. The, what goes along this axis is the probability, and this is the random variable. So let's assign uh, spaces to the random variables. One. Uh, let's put a little. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And now we'll put the probabilities of each of these things happening. The probability of getting a 1 is 1 out of 36 possibilities. Right. The, the only way you can get a 1 is to add 1 plus... Or, or, now I, I shouldn't even have 1, should I? Uh, so let's just go back. We'll erase... so on. Okay, probability of getting a 2 is 1 out of 36. There's only one way to get a 2, to add 1 and 1 and get 2. To get a 3, you can add a 1 and a 2, or you could add 2 and 1. And before you say, well, that's the same thing, 1 and 2, 2 and 1. Um, these are two different dice, and there are two ways to add up to 3. This one can be 1, and this one can be 2. Or this one could be 2, and this could be 1. Um, and when we count all the ways that we can roll dice, we're counting these as two different things. Six ways this can happen, six ways this can happen, six times six is 36. Um, so one and two is different from two and one because these are two different dice. So here we go. Two ways out of 36. So two out of 36 is the probability. And for four, you could do one and three, two and two, three and one. So that's three ways out of 36. This turns out to be 4 out of 36, 5 out of 36, 6 out of 36, and there it, it tops out. 7 is the most likely with a probability of 1 sixth, or 6 out of 36, and then we start to go back down. There's only 5 ways for an 8 to come up. There's only 4 three, two ways to come up with an 11, and one way to come up with a 12. So here's a bar graph, a histogram of the probability distribution. So it's just another representation, and then we can kind of start to see visually um, what happens. Uh, and this is what we call discrete, because there's just, there's no way to get two and a half. Uh, uh, the counterpart to discrete would be continuous, where any value could be uh, we could we could have any value in here, like five and a half or five point two or nine point three, but this is discrete. It jumps from two to three to four to five to six to seven, uh, and no in between. So there's just a different way to represent your probability distribution with a histogram or a bar graph. So I guess we need to move over here now, All right? And now we will talk about um, binomial probability. So how, what's, a pro, what, what's a binomial probability? Well, bi means two. Binomial probability. So something about this probability is two. Well, it's, it's just two-sided. Either it happens or it doesn't happen. There isn't, you could get this or this or this or this or this. It's, you're looking for a particular outcome, a particular event, uh, and if it happens, you succeed. Okay. So a binomial probability is either it happens or it doesn't. So if uh, let's say we're we're looking for a an event a to happen. 
So if A happens, uh, then we succeed. Okay. So if A happens, that's success. That's what we call success. Even if what we want A to be is like something that something doesn't happen, like we don't get the king of hearts, right? But that's an event that, that could happen. Uh, and if, um, let's say if A complement happens, if A does not happen, then we, that's what we call failure. <laughs> okay. And this probability we will call P. And this probability is just a leftover uh, that's not P. Um, and since either A happens or it doesn't, and that is everything, these are complements, and so this guy should be 1 minus P. All right, that's, the, that's a binomial probability. So if we go back to the um, rolling two die and adding them, or two dice and adding them, um, then a, a binomial probability we might look at, or, or now we're starting to get into a binomial experiment, um, we might look at what's the probability of, uh, of getting a, a 5, right? Um, so we, we only look at the 5. Um, and really, in an experiment, we would we'd kind of conduct this over a, a long period of time and um, look at the, the long-term results. But a binomial probability at its simplest is, you know, if we're looking for a 5, we get a 5, it's success. If we get anything other than 5, it's failure. It's not just some other result, it's failure. We, we didn't get that, okay? So now we'll talk about a binomial experiment. Well, a binomial probability, or binomial experiment is one that you are going to conduct a few times. So a binomial experiment uh, first of all, you, it's a single experiment is where you just draw a card and you say, what's the probability of getting that card? A particular card, a particular kind of card. But a binomial experiment, uh, just by design, by definition, is one that you're going to do a bunch of times. Okay, So we say there are n trials. We don't just do it once and ask what's the probability of this happening one time. We conduct it 10 times or 20 times or 30 times or 100 times. And then we ask, what's the probability that, uh, say, of those hundred times, what's the probability that we, um, you know, let's, let's say we, we're flipping a, a coin. In a hundred times, what's the probability that we'll get heads exactly 30 times? Okay, so we'll look at that probability, and, and you could think about it. How likely do you think that would be? How, to, to flip a coin a hundred times to get a heads only 30 times? Um... Well, that doesn't seem very likely. Um, it seems like you should get it around 50. So, um, uh, so to get it around 50 times would be probably the most likely thing, and to get it 30 times would be less likely. So you could just kind of start to think about something like that. Um, so we'll just phrase this next part this way. It just It has binomial probability. It ha it's, its probability works this way. We're looking for one particular result. We're looking at how often will we get a heads? How often will we get the king of hearts? Uh, how often will uh, someone answer a question uh, like yes or no? And that kind of thing. So that's what we're looking for in a binomial experiment. And we're just asking the one question. Yes or no? Uh, on or off? One or two? That's what we're asking. Uh, so... Uh, let's see, um, um, I believe lastly, um, so, now the, it's kind of, I think kind of obvious, but the probability is the same for every experiment, so each trial is independent, basically. Uh, each trial, and a trial is just... You know, if you're gonna flip a coin, flipping a coin is a trial. If you're gonna uh, roll dice, rolling dice is a, is one trial. Uh, if you're gonna ask a question in a survey, asking that question to a particular person, that's one trial. So each trial is independent. Independent. Had it right the first.
first time. Okay. Um, which means that the probability stays the same for every trial. Uh, so one, the result of, of one trial doesn't affect the next one. Uh, so for drawing cards, we got to put the first card back each time we draw a card out. Um, and, and so now we're going to talk about the probability in uh, n trials of, our, of having success k times uh, and... Um, uh, still debating as to if I'll make a separate video about this or not, but um, without any explanation, the probability, the probability, let's say, that k equals, or that, let's, I guess let's go this way, that our random variable x, okay, so we assign a number to this result, uh, that x equals k, Okay, so let's make some sense of this. Uh, k would be the number of times that you succeed. So if I flip uh, a coin 20 times, 20 times, 20 trials, that's n. If I flip it 20 times, and I want to know what's the probability that I will come up with heads exactly 7 of those 20 times. Well, 7 is k. k is the number of times that you get the result that you want to get. Okay, so the, the probability that the random variable x is equal to k, so the random variable x in this uh, in this experiment would be uh, five or sorry seven heads. Okay, so the, the probability that x is seven in that case, um, because k is the number of times we want to have this success. Um, so k is the number of times we want to succeed. The probability of this is equal to n choose k n ck uh, times the probability of success to the power of k times the probability of a failure to the power of n minus k. Like, whoa, that's that seems crazy. So um, I, I, I think I'll make a separate video for this. If you want to see an explanation of this formula, which I really encourage you to do, it, it's if, if you feel curious at all about how in the world this happens, um, then, then click on this, and um, uh, if, if, if I could value one quality above all others in a student, it would be curiosity. So uh, be curious. If you're at all curious about this, then you should click here and watch that video. Um, so, yeah, that, that, would, that would make me smile. Anyway, um, that's a binomial experiment. So let's just use this really quick. If um, if I were to say roll a die uh, twenty times, um, the question I want to ask is what is the probability of getting um, three, um, how do I want to phrase this, uh, of, of, of getting three, oh, this is kind of hard, these are both numbers, getting the number three, uh, four times. Okay, that's kind of a badly worded question. Uh, so sorry for that, that poorly worded question. But here, we have 20 things, or 20 times that we um, do this uh, experiment. Okay, but really our experiment is doing it 20 times uh, as a binomial experiment. So we do it 20 times, and we want to know what's the probability of getting a 3 four of those 20 times. Okay, so what we want to know is the probability that our random variable x is equal to 4. Okay, because we want to, we define success as getting a 3, but we want to get it 4 times. Okay, um, so I, I, can, I can already see your, your, your faces getting all twisted up uh, with a little bit of like, huh? So the random variable is the number of times we get a success. 
we define success kind of separately, and we say, well, this, this, this is what getting success means. Uh, but the random variable is how many times we are successful in this experiment. Um, because again, the experiment is actually not rolling the die, but the experiment is rolling the die 20 times. Okay, so uh, in a binomial experiment, the random variable is how many times you succeed. Enough of that. Okay, so we conduct the experiment 20 times. Uh, 20 choose 4 is, is you know, we, th that's how many times you want to succeed. So we'll multiply this by the probability of a success. The probability of getting a 3 is 1 out of 6, and we want that to happen 4 times. Uh, the probability that we will fail is 5 out of 6, and that's going to happen 20 minus 4 times, so that's supposed to happen 16 times. So what's this probability? Let's find out. It's exciting, isn't it? It's very tense right now. What is that probability? We're not sure. Uh, so 20, math, or choose 4. We can multiply that by 1 sixth uh, to the 4th, and multiply that by 5 sixths to the 16th power. So we have 20 choose 4 times 1 sixth to the 4th times 5 sixths to the 16th, 16th power. Um, so point two zero ish So this is about equal to point two zero. So there's a 20% probability of us getting uh, 3, 4 out of that 20 times. Um, which, if you think about it, 4 is one sixth, no it's not, four is one fifth, four is one fifth of 20, um, which is kind of close to one sixth, so you would expect to get a three, you know, around three or four times out of 20 times. Um, so anyway, there's, there's this fairly good probability that you'll get uh, four, three t or four threes, you'll get the number three four times uh, out of those 20. And then we can count to calculate the probability of Getting a success five times, uh, and that would be 20, choose five, times one-sixth to the fifth, uh, times five-sixths to the sixteenth, or not the sixteenth, but the fifteenth, and that'll be, you know, about something. So, uh, watch the next video, and uh, do some sample problems.